Right, so in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, if you're building a squad, the most important thing is, is getting the players in the right positions, spacing, like the actual spacing, right? So if you're playing stats, player skills, play styles, all of that stuff is, is a part of it, right? If you are obviously going up the divisions, but to get to division one, like you need to have a bit, a good solid team right there, right? You need to have a good solid team that can actually be in the position that you want them to be in. Because it doesn't matter what player you have. If you've got Van Dijk, or you've got Kamara, or you've got Gavardiel, or Danilo, or Corona, it doesn't matter, right? You can always block the ball if you manually are in the position, right? So that's the first thing. What I would say is that if you've got your formation, like say you're playing a four at the back, right? I would always have a defensive right back or a defensive left back, one or the other. I'd never have both, right? Because I'm playing four at the back. We're playing long ball counter. We have our team play style that is going to be defensively sound at the back. We also have defensive on Kamara, so he's going to act as a third centre back. We have deep line on Kamara. And of course, when we're playing team play style long ball, we're going to be defending as deep as we possibly can that the game allows in, in, in the game, right? On the pitch. So what I would do is I would always have an attacking left back or an attacking right back. In this case, it's Davies. So I'm going to concentrate on his dribbling. I'm going to concentrate on his speed, acceleration, his balance, getting up and down the pitch. I'm not going to worry about anything else because my attacking threat is going to come from these four boys to my striker. And then we're going to have our right back that I'm going to manually defend with. So if I'm not using Danilo, I'm probably going to use somebody like wan -Bissaka, right? If you look at the difference between them, they're very, very similar players, right? Speed, obviously, Bissaka and acceleration is higher, but defensively, they've got really high tackling, really good aggression and defensive engagement, right? So if I'm putting Bissaka in there, you look at the difference between Bissaka and Davies. One is, on the left, is Davies is going to be uh, defensive or is going to be attacking. The one on the right, wan is going to be defensive. So I'm going to be manually covering the gaps when I'm letting my AI control Van Dijk and Gavardiel. I'm going to let them manually. Davies, doesn't really matter where he goes. If I want to manually defend with Davies, I can and let the three boys defend if I'm playing against a good player. Also, Kamara, these tripod here, this little triangle is going to be very important. So I'm going to effectively be defending with these three, letting the AI. I'm going to be attacking with Davies. And then I'm also going to be with wan -Bissaka. I'm going to be mopping up everything here with wan -Bissaka manually. So everything in this box here, I'm going to be attacking manually, if that makes sense. Okay? So... That's where I would go with that. So I would have defensive stats on him. If I'm playing a four at the back, I would have one really high defensive stats player. Build up, destroyer, doesn't really matter. Once you have defensive awareness, tackling and aggression, defensive engagement all around the 90 mark. And also being able to be tall, and if not tall, have good jump, such as Cardoba or somebody like that. Blocker is a must, interception is a must, aerial superiority and acrobatic clearance are a must as well. Huge, right? Next up, we'll have our versatile player. Now, Gavardiel, I would usually play somebody like, um, if this is my road to glory, you could play somebody like this guy, Silva, who's going to have a bit of everything, right? He's going to be build up as well, but it doesn't really matter because you've got that speed and acceleration, which is very, very nice if you're playing him centrally. Or also you could play somebody like Danilo, who's got that pace, 75 plus pace, 75 plus acceleration, still got the good defensive stats. The better the player, the less this matters and more player skills and stats matter. So that's for a 4-3-3 or a 4 5 one. If you were playing a tree at the back, right? Let's just say you're playing a tree at the back, right? And we're going to move this here because I can mess around with this team. It's not so ma it's not so important. I'm going to keep my slow aerial threat in the middle so that he's on the end of corners when he's defending. I'm going to have a versatile CB here and I'm going to have another versatile CB here. So that's kind of where I'd go with that. I'm going to leave Kamara holding, right? I'm going to have my three CBs here. So I'll have two versatile CBs. So Gavardiel and Danilo are going to be my versatile here. I'll probably shove up into a two-man strike force. I'll have Davies as a left mid. His positioning stays the same. It's all about speed, acceleration, getting back and helping. And then we'll have the same kind of situation going on here. If you're playing a five at the back, it's the same, man. It's the same thing, right? If you're playing a five at the back, you've got the same options. You need two versatile players in here and you need like somebody that's able to do everything. I always defend, let the AI defend two with two, with positioning, and then I player switch to whoever I need, and then I'll manually either defend through the middle with Kamara or defend with one of my right or left backs, depending on which is the defensive option, right? So stats for them are fairly easy. Up the pitch then, no matter where your positioning is, if you're using an attacking midfielder, 
You either need a run and gun, which is good acceleration, balance, dribbling, or else you need a passer. Now, Messi can do both, right? He can actually shoot. He can do everything. The only thing he's weak on is his speed and his stamina. So I would take Messi off. But if I was playing an attacking midfielder here, such as Leroy Sané, when he's fully up, he can't play attacking midfielder, but his other version can, his whole player, right? I'm going to be running gunning with him, right? He's going to be a run and gun. But if I was playing somebody like Neymar or Jean Matinho in that role as an attacking midfielder, he's going to be passing. I'm not going to be running, going and touching. I'm going to be leaving him in his position and not manually dragging him out of position. Um, so the best position and formations for them would be tight possession, balance, low pass. And then if you run and gun, acceleration and balance. And then up front, depending on whether you're playing wingers or through the middle, you need to have one, I would say, if you're playing two up front, one target man that's able to win the ball in the air right? So if I was playing this formation, I'd probably play Kane, and then I'd probably play Lataro Martinez. So you've got one on the ground, and you've got one that can mop up everything in the air, just to keep your opponents guessing. So the idea would be, if you're playing a four at the back, or a five at the back, or even a three at the back, you're getting a player that can swing the ball in left midfield with loads of runs, or else you've got a really good attacking midfielder that can put the ball into these areas, right? And then whatever wing you want to attack on. So that's a very interesting one, um, just as we close off that, but if you, if you do have any questions, let, let me know, um, because that's the way we all learn, and all of us depends, if you've got epics, it's not going to make too much of a difference, to be honest.